Back to the channel, everyone. I'm Stav. <laughs> Welcome back, Stav. How you doing? Where have you been? Uh, you know, TV land. How's how's the car been going? Uh, oh, that, that's cold, man. That's <laughs> cold. <laughs> Let's get an update. I'm George. Welcome back to Malak Motorsports. We're going to be covering Stav's B5 12 valve VR6 here. Uh, and I'll let Stav get into it as it's, it's his car. I'm not for? smiling. I'm not smiling. Every time uh, 12 valve is down... I, it brings a little bit of happiness to you? A, 12, a 24 valve gets its wings. I'm just saying. I just, it doesn't bring me pleasure at all seeing this car like this, but we left the car off about a month ago as we were just installing the head. Um, and I'll let Stav get into the story. Stav, give us a little better background. You know, we, we, ins we installed the head. I made you that downpipe. So we put the car together. We got it up and firing mm -hmm. and moving. What were the initial issues or some of the things that you experienced when we got everything back together? Well, the car still felt low on power. That's the first off. And every time we would do a pull, the car would begin to overheat, which, I mean, we would get to uh, temperatures that we wouldn't see even in summertime. So it was very apparent uh, that, you know, we, we replaced the thermostat. We had a spare water pump. Didn't fix the issue, so when we did we a lead the system, pressurize oh, the system, a hundred times. Which, I mean, we try to make because sometimes these cars do have a little bit of a bleeding issue. You got to bleed it multiple times for it to be correct. But we ended up pulling the head after doing a leak down test because we figured out something was wrong inside the motor, and we see that the head gasket was leaking. There was no damage to the head, physical damage, like as if you lifted a head, but it looked like the the head gasket had failed the copper head gasket. So uh, we decided to send the motor, uh, the cylinder head out to FFE in New York and have them test it, and they found that the the recently rebuilt head was completely leaking. And, uh, and, and let's stop there for a second, let's pause. Why, you know, here in California, there's a lot of different performance machine shops out here. Mm -hmm. Why would we not use a local shop as opposed to sending something back to New York for the VR6? Well, we did, and it was leaking, so that's why we sent no, it to New York. No, all, all uh -huh. I'm saying in general, we didn't really use a performance-based machine shop. A lot of the Correct. ones that are performance-based are eight or nine months out for work. The machine shop that we did use uh, unfortunately couldn't get the job done there's some issues there and then once we sent your head out to edit force fed he found both the valves were never lapped or yeah after, after he hot tanked and washed everything he did a, a vacuum and pressure test and he sent me videos of it and so every see if we can put it in here real quick correct. Sure. We'll, we had the video if you look there's a couple angles cut on the valve the 45 degree angle of the valve is all black it wasn't even sealing on the 45 and you can see it it's thinner here it was sealing there when it comes around, it's sealing here, and then it gets dark. It wasn't sealing there. Every single valve was leaking. Every single valve was leaking, and it was very apparent that the valve job was never done because there's a coating that was never removed. All right, so aside from that stuff, what are we doing here today? I got a, a box of, it looks like a, an eBay intercooler kit. I got, a, I got a table full of uh, new vibrant clamps and, and silicone couplers. And then for some reason, together with that, I have V-band aluminum clamps that you got. Uh, I'll show the time lapse of the coolant bottle, the, the pieces that you brought that you made me make for you. Mm -hmm. So we made you a, a new aluminum slash Beskar. A uh, coolant bottle. Well, not best car because nobody likes best car, but uh, a new aluminum coolant bottle. It'll be pretty cool because we can use a regular pressure cap versus a Volkswagen plastic cap. Cool. All right, so uh, we actually ended up picking today this little bandsaw too for like 140 bucks. Tell them from where we got it from. People are not going to believe that we got this from Harbor Freight. <laughs> from Harbor Freight. Uh, before I was using the DeWalt, is that a DeWalt? Yeah, that I bought? DeWalt. Mm -hmm. The DeWalt uh, cutter, but it's not so kind to aluminum piping. It would really jag up everything. And when I made the intercooler piping for the RS3, let's say I didn't enjoy myself completely. I was Correct. deburring. But fixing. When you were making the intercooler piping, what did I tell you we should buy and you said we don't need it? You said that we should probably get a really giant heavy industrial uh, bandsaw mm. and I uh, sought to find one from Harbor Freight that was Are smaller. Are you saying that this heavy, this one is not heavy or industrial? <laughs> it says it right on the box. Well, we ended up picking up this really cool bandsaw for $140 and we actually test test cut it on a couple pipes and it actually cuts really nice and clean like i'll get some i'll get some time lapse footage you guys can see how much nicer this is and in fact i may even remake a lot of the intercooler piping on the rs3 just because it's so much easier to use and are i probably should have just picked one up a are while you ago gonna put new piping because you're blowing them off right now with no RS3? i'm not oh, okay. the car is not and, and speaking of which my, my stuff is still there we got the seals in we're working on an update video for you guys. We're also waiting on the clutch basket and a few other things to come in. So we figured what a perfect time to get Stav's, you know, uh, B5 
Uh, you, about 12, say, you about to say shitbox. I was not about to say shitbox. You about to say shitbox. I was not. Definitely not about to say shitbox. No, definitely I, I've been taking some kung, kung fu classes. <laughs> I'm just going to throw those out there. You know what so I mean? anyway, um, now that I, I did take up a lot of the welding, especially TIG, uh, and I've gotten a little bit more comfortable and confident with it, I figured let's just remake a lot of stops into cooler piping just to make sure his car is legit. He's opted to go with a combination of some aluminum V-bands, some silicone piping and couplers. Uh, so it's kind of interesting to see what Stav's design is as I lay it out. I already made him his coolant bottle. I'll show you the time lapse of that here just in a little bit. I'll add it to the beginning just before hey, we kick we off the, the piping. Linder Fab? Uh, you ended up you picking that up. Yeah, so yeah. you where'd you buy? You yeah, bought I don't remember Linder Fab. I think we bought these from the two halves. Which name? Could you mention these to me? I didn't, and I thought, hey, so someone I found these randomly. I think I saw Linder post about it, and they're mm -hmm. two aluminum halves. And I figured, stuff. Imagine if we made a coolant bottle with it. Correct. And so I was like, actually, it would be cool. Would you down? Would you be down to make it? I was like, yeah, sure. Order the parts. So you ordered the parts that came in, uh, and I ended up putting it together, cleaning it on the inside. I cut a small little groove, small weld, and then a larger one going over it, and then just did one solid bead. And then he got his pressurized cap and then we didn't install anything else such as mounts as we don't know how it's going to kind of orient and then plus all the ports all the individual sensors and ports that are going to go on the inside uh we haven't lined up yet but once we have it mocked up where it's going to be mounted inside the bay which we'll talk about it real quick probably somewhere along the lines in there we'll i'll make i got aluminum plate i'll make some mounts on the back of that form so it mounts to that kind of plate that he has over there against the firewall and then wherever he decides to put his ports, which I'm trying to get him to do AN style so we could just screw on. But he did buy these really cool, uh, what size are they? Three eighths? Yeah. Three eighths. So well, slip this is, over. This is five eighths. Five eighths. Mm -hmm. And then we'll slip over and then we'll use some perma clamps. Those uh, same ones we used on the fuel line uh, video that we did once we had to redo a whole bunch of those clamps on Correct. the fuel kit. Correct. So we'll do that maybe Once we mount there. in the car, we'll know exactly where we need to put them, drill them, and uh, we'll get that done today. All right, so let's get this off going. Uh, we'll start getting everything mocked up. Stobbs has got to put his front end. He's got to put that stock head back on just for alignment. Throw his intake manifold on. Get the radiator back on. And then I can mount that intercooler, see where it needs to be. Then make new mounts for him. And then we can start figuring out the piping. So stuff. Get to work, get your stuff back together, and then we can start fabbing some stuff up here. So what's going on over here, Stav? Uh, we mounted the intercooler, but as you can see, I mean, the intercooler uh, spirals, a moves a little bit. <laughs> so this is the main problems with the mounting system that Stav has now. It's just one bar that comes across and one bolt. Even when it's super tight, it still allows the intercooler to have play left and right. Uh, and you go any tighter, you're stripping that aluminum, which brought him to the original problem of having uh, issues with the mounting system. So we're going to be changing that up and upgrading it. Uh, but mainly what we wanted to show you is the preload and piping issue. You can see just from the top there how that uh, intercooler piping doesn't line up. And the top of it is actually a Wiggins clamp that goes to the throttle body. And we're actually using the alignment clamp that the same thing that I used on the uh, uh, RS3 to fabricate a lot of the intercooler piping. So this is actually where the intercooler piping is naturally sat before it starts to use, um, you know, its movement. It's 13, 12 to 13 degrees worth of play. And as you can see, you know, whoever mounted this and kind of fabbed this up before uh, didn't use that. Probably didn't even have that on. Probably eyeballed it. And the other side is a little off too. It's not that bad, but I guess it's pretty bad. <laughs> I guess it's pretty bad. I mean, you know, this this probably will hold at a certain boost level. We've had it hold up until 40 pounds, and then all of a sudden we keep blowing piping off. And now with this opportunity of the downtime, we're going to be able to, uh, you know, what's it called, align everything and make sure that it's perfect. Well, and we're going to be we're going to be cutting too with the band saw. We're going to be adjusting, cutting, fitting this to actual length, and to make sure that it lines up. And you can see on both sides that edge is not exactly at the same level. This this pipe is almost angling up this way and the intercooler is just straight up and down so there's going to be a lot of changes that we're going to be doing to both as you can see this this is kind of angling off on the side too also we're going to be going to a v-band here yeah correct correct and you know a lot of people are going to say like in the video in the comments that you can't use a v-band because there's no movement but because we're using the silicone on the moving parts like off the turbo and on the you know we have the the vibrant clamp on the driver's side along with an extra silicone we're going to put down here but by my oil cooler we're gonna ha it'll, it'll uh have enough room for the play those little serrated edges from fav show up yet or no no those those will show up tuesday with my new cylinder head okay so we're not doing we're not going to touch or start cutting the piping today right. but what i think today stop from what i'm gathering what you're saying we can put on the v-band ends i can cut the ears off on right. the intercooler on the v on the uh band on the bandsaw yeah. i can weld those on and then your coolant ball pretty much 
be done. We'll be done. I cut this little half circle. So my first cut on the uh, on the bandsaw here. I ended up making this cool part. So it's a little half circle, and then it'll go right up against it. And then it'll, this will be the mounting tab where Stav can mount it against the firewall on that little bar. He just has to figure out which way is the alignment. And I think I. You already plotted out one of the holes for the ports, right? Yeah, correct. For the 5 8 drain. And then we have the top port. So it'll probably end up looking something like this. So right there. So right. let's let's kick this off, Stav, because I, I know we, we're, we're updating a lot of people here, but let's get to work. I'll start fabricating or start welding this bung on. And then we'll double check this. I'll put this mounting tab on. And then you got to choose where you're going to want that that uh, that res sensor. That, uh, Correct. The, the coolant level sensor. The coolant level sensor. You're going to have to figure out where you want that. And I'll weld that on. And then do me a favor, stuff. We're going to pull off your intercooler. Let's cut the ears off the intercooler and weld on those V-band, uh, those ends. The one thing we're not putting, which put a lot, made a lot of people angry, is a sight glass in my coolant reservoir. Oh yeah, that's yeah. The, on the internet. People, are you gonna? How are you gonna see? Are you gonna know what's going on with the coolant if you can't see it? Well, I'm gonna show you guys a new trick. It's called open the coolant bottle before you start the car and make sure there's coolant. <laughs> on top of that, we have a coolant. We're gonna put a coolant level sensor. And, and one guy was very upset with us saying that. Oh, how are you gonna depend on sensors? Well, I think we depend on sensors for the rest of the car, and they've done me right so far. You know. Yeah, so, yeah. And what's one more coolant level sensor that's gonna add it? And you can't actually open the bottle as you're driving. How can you check the level while you're driving? Only with a sensor. Correct, correct. I mean, the thing is, you know, like with a car like this, it's not like I don't just start the car up every time and drive. We always check the oil, check the coolant, power steering. We make sure that every... I'm just saying. I'm just. I'm just saying that that's the one thing we. The sensors they were telling us was 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 was. There's it no such thing. There's no such thing as a compression sensor. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get to work here. Uh, we're going to finish up the coolant bottle, get it all mocked up and welded, and then mounted in his bay. Stav, we're going to yank off that intercooler. We're going to start cutting it here on the bandsaw, uh, and let's weld those V-band uh, flanges on there and see what it looks like. I live inside my own world of make-believe Kids screaming in the cradles, profanities I see the world through ice covered in ink and bleach Cross out the ones who heard my cries and watched me weep I love everything Fire spreading all around my room My world's so bright, it's hard to breathe But that's alright Hush Go. 
Finally, after seven hours, yeah, right. George is finally done welding. Thank God. So we actually got a lot done. So we actually cleaned up and then used the Harbor Freight bandsaw to cut these and then weld these. It's actually welded really nice in my opinion. Again, so these are CX Racing Transitions because this is originally a two, point, two and three quarter uh, intercooler and we're going to three inch V-band. Correct. Yeah. So we cut off the ears just to, so this way you don't have, you know, five foot extension on your intercooler. Correct. We cut off the ears. Uh, a little bit of learning on the bandsaw. We have a quarter inch blade. So it manipulates a lot easier. So it didn't really cut straight. Mm -hmm. So we're going to upgrade this to the half inch blade. They didn't have it at Harbor Freight. All they had was a quarter inch. We're, we're blaming the blade today. All I'm saying is I had to use the uh, the grinder a little bit more than usual. Okay, because of the blade. Like like I said, it's we're going to probably have to use the half inch blade because it okay. doesn't so distort as easy. So we get the half inch, we're going to have to buy the bigger machine that has the alignment and all that because... I like your thinking. You see, it's it's <laughs> it, we're, we're finding the weak points in these machines. Harbor Freight, you're welcome. Like, I feel like... The Everyone knows where the weak points are. But that's so we point. actually finished up your cooling bottle too. So we mocked it up, got the out port gone. So it's, that's on there. We didn't put the sensor yet uh, in there, but uh, now we mocked it up where it's going to kind of sit in the bay. Check this out. So Stav has this, uh, I guess the previous owner mocked up this rail here in the back. Uh -huh. So we're going to use this tab and pretty much mount it there. And that's where his bottle is going to be. I'm not sure where we're going to put the sensor, but the uh, outlet port's going to go straight to that hose. It's going to mount there in a couple different spots. It's going to be strong enough. Nothing's going to happen. So I was going to have his pressure cap on there. So we don't have to ever worry about, you know, replacing the OEM uh, coolant ports or the coolant uh, reservoir. Uh, and then you just literally got to choose your where your sensor is going to be stuff. But Correct. And one of the main reasons I wanted to go with this is because there'll be aluminum. No more of the swelling, the plastic that turns yellow every time we need to go yellow. Yeah. And then plus I did a lot of learning too on this. So being that the ball is a lot thicker than the actual uh, tab material. Mm -hmm. So um, ended up just kind of starting out really hot then aiming at the thicker material then just dropping in and adding more material as I was coming about. So it didn't come out too bad. I mean, listen, month five, maybe six now learning at home, no earlier, classing. Earlier in the video, you mentioned I don't pay you for these things. And then you're also admitting to learning. On oh, no, 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 don't, don't worry about the payment. Uh, there is a tab being formed and <laughs> it's okay if you don't cover it now. At the end of the year, we have a layaway plan. Pictures of the learning spot will be included in my return. <laughs> well, we'll just minus 2% for every weld, but it went good. And then I ended up going a little bit hotter on the bottom end just to make sure it doesn't, you know, it doesn't go back and forth. So if you look there in the middle, I, it, it's to best of my ability that I got it on there. And then the port actually welded really nice too. You did a good job. I man. went 130 amps on this with about 70%. And uh, I forgot what side rod I used. I got I to show you guys which rod, but ended up welding really nice. So Honestly, George, you did a lot better than I thought you would. You said you were going to sand this down and then polish this? After seeing your welds? I'm not going to. Oh. I, I, I was only saying So that you were assuming that, that you were going to coat this because my welds are going to be really shitty? And guys, that's the end of the video. I really appreciate you guys watching, and we'll have the end. Oh um, no, 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 uh, no! We have the end of the intercooler pipes uh, going on this week. We're waiting for my head to come back in. Uh, what else are we waiting for? My head to come in. Those serrated uh, et, um, fittings to come in from yeah, FFE. Correct. And then we'll be able to correct those and chop correct. up those intercooler pipes that are over there too. So. This is just the beginning. We got his intercooler ready. All the V-band ports uh, or the flanges are pretty much on there. Mm -hmm. So now moving forward, we'll be able to add the pipe. And then as you guys saw the preload that, you know, Stav's intercooler system was falling victim to, we're going to make it pretty much from scratch now, but without redoing the entire system. So I think I can salvage pretty much everything that you see there. So he's already got his nitrous ports. He's already got his tile uh, blow off valve on there. I think I can cut it here. Mm -hmm. And Stav wants to add those serrated pieces here with some silicone couplers just to add more flex. Even Correct. though the car is solid mounted, it does move quite a bit. Correct. And dr Stav drives this pretty much as, as often as he could as a daily. So we'll try to make this as daily drivable as possible. What do you mean as much as I could as much as you can i mean it's broken a lot or like what are you trying to say about it i'm just saying that i haven't seen you on the channel for like 30 days no one's seen you i've been getting emails pms like swear stop they thought like you quit you went to go work for like apr or something i didn't know what to say i didn't know what to say that's messed up, that's messed up. <laughs> that's messed up. <laughs> all right guys that's the end of our video uh i hope you guys enjoyed it uh i'm stars i'm george thank you again for watching we'll catch you guys on the next episode